Let's take a look at Coupang's third quarter result. CEO Bom Kim began the call by highlighting four key takeaways. First, he stated that Coupang is achieving durable growth with increasing profitability simultaneously. This is due to years of substantial investment and unwavering dedication to two key factors, customer experience and operational excellence. And all these are possible thanks to Coupang's flywheel. It is accelerating with the selection advantage being a crucial driver. Third-party merchants benefit from savings by accessing the infrastructure and technology investments made by Coupang. And customers enjoy more services and selection on Rocket services, which in return attracts more merchants to FLC and accelerates the flywheel effect. In the third quarter, they expanded their product selection for both 1P and 3P offerings, leading to faster growth in the number of active customers, which increased by 14% year-over-year, the fastest growth rate since the pandemic levels of 2021. And revenue growth also accelerated compared to the previous quarter's growth. Increasing selection on Rocket, which means more products that can be delivered the next day for free, leads to higher customer spending on coupon. And newer categories like Fresh grew more than twice as fast as the overall business and the market growth rate. Strong 3P volume growth is outpacing other aspects of the business, partly driven by the rapid expansion of fulfillment and logistics by Coupang, aka FLC, which is growing more than three times faster than the overall business. Coupang believes there is significant growth potential in terms of the number of active customers and their spending per person. They currently have 20 million active customers and a single-digit share in a retail market projected to exceed $550 billion in three years indicating more rooms for expansion. WoW membership, which is equivalent to Amazon's Prime membership, plays a crucial role in enhancing the benefits of Coupang's ecosystem by increasing customer engagement across all offerings. For example, the WoW savings program in Eats, which is a food delivery service like DoorDash, has shown remarkable results since its launch in early second quarter. Not only has it led to a surge of customer and growth orders, but also a 90% increase in participation in savings program by WOW members. On top of this, transaction volume has more than doubled in over 75% of the regions where the program was introduced. Coupang anticipates that each will capture approximately 20% of the market share by the end of this year, almost double its level at the program's launch. And here are some more interesting stats. This each program is a permanent feature of WOW membership, and only around 20% of WOW members purchasing each in Q3 there is significant room for future growth. The positive impact of this program extends beyond EATS, as it contributes to higher member acquisition and retention within WOW membership. In regions where the program has been launched, WOW members who purchase through EATS spend twice as much as overall compared to WOW members who don't use the service. Last discussion was about Taiwan, Coupang's latest expansion. CEO claimed the company's confidence in the long-term potential of Taiwan is increasing. Rocket delivery was launched in Taiwan on October 2022, and it has scaled rapidly, surpassing the growth rate in its first year of operation compared to when it was launched in Korea. Also, the Coupang app is on track to become the most downloaded app in the market for the entire 2023, which indicates strong user adoption and engagement. And the growth in Taiwan is not only beneficial for the company, but also opens doors of opportunity for merchants and suppliers in Korea. For example, over 12,000 SMEs have been able to export their products to Taiwan in just one year, addressing their historical challenges of reaching customers outside of their domestic market. Now, let's take a dive into Coupang's third quarter financial earnings. First, in terms of operating stats, there were 20.4 million active customers, growing at 14% year over year, and revenue per customer in constant currency was $296, of 4% year over year. As a result, Coupang's total revenue was $6.2 billion, up 18% year-over-year in constant currency. The revenue can be broken down into two segments. Product commerce revenue was $6 billion, up 18% year-over-year, and developing offerings, which includes Eats and Taiwan, recorded revenue of $218 million, up 40% year-over-year. Cost of sales was $4.6 billion, up 19%, and other operating expenses were $1.5 billion, up 28% year-over-year. As a percentage of revenue in Q3, this expense item increased over 120 basis points year-over-year, 
negatively impacted by the change in FLC accounting. And as a result, Kopang's operating income was $87.5 million, up 13% year over year. Next, cash flow from operations for the nine months was $2 billion, up from a loss of $15 million a year ago. Capital expenditure was $662 million, down 6% year over year. And on a trailing 12 month basis, free cash flow was $1.9 billion, which increased by $2.8 billion year over year. And as a result, Kupang's cash balance was $5.3 billion, up significantly from last year's $3.1 billion. So basically, the company is growing very fast, and at the same time, it's increasing its cash pile, which are obviously good news for the investors. Now, let's take a look at the three parts from the Q&A section that's important for Kupang's financial model. Regarding the fluctuations in product commerce EBITDA margin, management claimed that it was not because of the changes in pricing or pricing policies, but rather due to one-time expenses related to new selection and merchant acquisition costs. For example, FLC is margin accretive when excluding new merchant acquisition costs, and CEO remained confident in product commerce segment and its long-term guidance of achieving over 10% adjusted EBITDA and corresponding free cash flow. Next, about developing offerings EBITDA guidance, CEO expected the investment in developing offerings to decline in the fourth quarter compared to the third quarter, and anticipated total investment for the year to be roughly in line with or slightly above the $400 million estimate. In fact, he is encouraged by the momentum and underlying economics seen in developing offerings initiatives and claimed Kupang applies disciplined investment principles to initiatives that confirm potential and meaningful differentiation in customer experience and expect significant future cash flow generated from these projects. And finally, when asked about competitors like Timo and AliExpress in Korea, he asserted that Kupang's ability to demonstrate strong growth in revenue and active customer numbers with accelerating growth for three consecutive quarters, active customer growth is at its fastest since the pandemic levels. This is due to significant investments that are made to provide best customer experience with cost discipline. Also, Kupang is committed to expanding selection, lowering prices, and enhancing customer service. And Kim believes that Kupang is still in an early stage with a single-digit share in a retail market that's expected to grow in the future. In the last section, we'll examine two pieces of news centered on Kupang. First, CJ Logistics, Korea's largest logistics firm lost market share as Kupang's business surged. For your information, Kupang established Kupang Logistics Service, or CLS, in 2021, which has been registered as a proprietary career business. And CJ's market share declined from 50.1% in 2020 to 44% in the following year. Kupang CLS, although not disclosing its exact market share, is considered the second largest delivery firm and delivered 1.3 parcels in 2022, accounting for 36% of the total deliveries in the country. Next, Coupang Play, which is the company's OTT platform, outpaced streaming rivals in Korea. Here are some of the notable achievements. Play achieved the fastest year-over-year -year subscriber growth in the country, surpassing both local and global competitors like Netflix and Disney. It reached a milestone of 6 million subscribers in less than 3 years since its launch. And as of last month, Play had 6.34 million subscribers, making it the first local platform to reach this level in South Korea. It gained 2.3 new users in the year prior, the highest growth among similar platforms in the country. Also, Kupang recently secured exclusive rights to the German Bundesliga in South Korea from 2024-25 season to 28-29 season. This is all the while, Watcha, which is a local platform, saw a decrease of 230,000 users, and Disney+, Plus, which is in the second place, recorded just 1 million new users, followed by TVing, Netflix, and Wave. Okay, so that's it for update on Coupang today, and we'll make sure to reflect these numbers in Coupang's valuation model. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more updates on tech companies around the world, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys.